get you out of nowhere and barely leave you holding on. And when you're tired of fighting. Hey, Nami students, Mr. Yance, uh, again, uh, going, uh, continuing on with day three of notes uh, on epithelial and connective tissue, mate. For the most part, we went over epithelial tissue the last couple days, and today we're going to go over a little bit with connective tissue. So I uh, hope it makes sense. And if you got questions, make sure you ask them in class. So connective tissue is a lot different than epithelial tissue in the respect that connective tissue uh, is not classified by number of layers and shape of cells like epithelial. That's pretty straightforward and, and pretty easy to to comprehend, but connective tissue is a very diverse, very wide variety type of tissue that uh, is a little tougher, and that's why I'm going to have you look at a lot of different ones in, in lab uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, coming up here, uh, hopefully tomorrow, if this is the this is the year you're watching this video, or, or, or someday uh, we will uh, look at these tissues, and, and you will identify them by the way they look. So what you look for in connective tissue is what's in the matrix. What is in the cell uh, cytoplasm per se, okay? So we have everything from tissue paper webs, you literally can tear them apart with your fingers, uh, to cord-like tendons and ligaments that are super tough, the opposite end of the spectrum, to rigid bone, to fluid, blood. And you can see those four uh, tissue types there on your screen. So uh, very, very different looking tissues as you go through different types of connective tissues. Uh, there's a good picture of your ankle uh, and all the tendons in your feet, uh, your toes and your, and your ankle bones and your metatarsals, your foot bones. Um, you can see why it hurts when you sprain your ankle, right? Uh, so connective tissue is all about the matrix. So you can have lots of different types of fibers. That's what makes one different from another. We have white collagenous, which are bundles of tough, strong fibers made out of the most abundant tissues of the body. About one-fourth of every protein in the human body is white collagenous. So you'll find them in tendons and ligaments and in places where you got a lot of movement, a lot of pull, places where you don't want to have your fibers breaking on you. Reticular is the opposite end. That'd be more of that tissue paper web stuff where you have capillaries, nerve fibers, places where uh, you don't have a lot of movement. So you don't have to worry about strength. You already could pull that apart with your fingers again. And then elastic fibers is where you want to have some give. Uh, tendons and ligaments have a combination of white collagenous and elastic, especially ligaments, because they have a little give. Not much, but a little. So you want to you want to have some elastic fiber in your blood vessels so they can pulsate in your cartilage, so it can move like your nose, your your ears. And that type of thing. Uh, and that also is where we have problems, I'll talk about that later, where they break and they can cause wrinkles in your skin or worse, arterial sclerosis, where you can have strokes and what happened in the blood vessels where you can have some strokes and some, some problems with that, right? So the aging process, unfortunately, as you get older, those elastic fibers, after they've been stretching for 50, 60, 70 plus years, are going to break and you're going to have uh, wrinkles and hardening of the arteries and things like that. Okay. Now let's start going through some different types of connective tissue, some of which you will see in lab under the microscope. Arillar tissue is one of them I will have you look at. It's pretty easy to identify because it literally looks like someone's taking a pencil and scribbled all over the page. I'll show you some pictures of it in a second. Um, Arillar tissue is kind of fascinating in the fact that it is a very loose, stretchable tissue that is uh, some of the most widely distributed tissues in the body. It doesn't have a specific function per se. It does have a function, uh, but it's more of a general type. Uh, let me kind of explain that a little bit. So the main thing you find in arillar tissue is something called hyaluronidase, kind of a mouthful. Hyaluronidase is an enzyme that changes a gel to a water. So arillar tissue is, is for the most part this gel and the hope is things come into that like bacteria and they get hung up in that gel and their immune system can attack what's ever in there. Um, that is the, the design. Your throat, your nasal passageways have a lot of arillar tissue in it. Well pneumonia and streptococci are two types of uh, bacteria that have figured out a way around that. 
So they have this enzyme called hyaluronidase. And since that hyaluronic acid is what's in the aortic tissue, it makes the gel, this enzyme breaks down that gel into water. Now think about that for a minute. It'd be much easier to move through a gel or a water medium than gel. So as strep gets in there and breaks down, uh, it, it can travel and spread much faster. So if you've ever had strep, which I've had a couple times, you know what I'm talking about, scratchy throat in the, in the morning. By the end of the day, you have full-blown strep. You can't hardly swallow because once it turns that gel into a liquid, now it just freely flows. Same way with pneumonia. Pneumonia does that as well. Um, so let me show you some pictures. You can see pretty easy tissue to identify. It literally looks like someone scribbled on the page and there's strep and pneumonia down at the bottom. And, and we have a lot of stuff in there that's stuck in that gel, mainly immune things, erythrocytes and neutrophils. You see them in there, mast cells, uh, lymphocyte cells. They're in there to attack and kill uh, foreign bodies. Works really, really well for the most part, but sometimes we do have that issue with with strep throat pneumonia where it does change that gel to a liquid, okay? Adipose is another tissue you will find. Um, adipose is a fancy name for fat. Uh, have you look at it under the microscope? It kind of looks like soap bubbles. It, it's kind of spread all over the place. See if I can find, whoops, see if I can find a picture of that real quick for you. Um, kind of fascinating looking tissue. Uh, it, it really is, um, just fat, which has a purpose, you know, a lot of times, here you go, a lot of times we don't like fat. There you can see the like soap bubbles and then they're filled with, with this fat tissue that, that uh, insulates the body, protects things. Unfortunately, we accumulate a lot of it and it pushes the skin out and, and we gain weight and things like that. But adipose tissue is just what it is. It is uh, in there for a purpose. It is in there to pad the kidneys and some vital organs and store excess energy in the form of food. Uh, fortunately, we get more adipose than we need for the most part as, as humans. Most people do, not everybody, but most people. And it does cause some weight problems in, in people. So that's adipose. You will find that over there in lab as well. Reticular tissue, uh, I'm not going to put it in, in the histology lab because it looks so much like areolar. I don't want to confuse you. It's just got a little more 3D webbing. Uh, same purpose. Uh, just has a little different look to it. Uh, it's in there like a spider web. Think about how spiders use a web to trap their prey. We're doing that with foreign bodies as well. Uh, but it, it is a uh, tissue that looks eerily familiar to uh, aerial tissue. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It actually looks like shattered glass. So it does have, a. you can see it has just a little bit different appearance, kind of the same purpose, but uh, you can see why I'm not going to put that on your, your histology uh, lab because it just has so much similarities to um, aortic tissue. Found in your spleen, your lymph nodes, your bone marrow, uh, same thing, filtering out injurious materials. We have these things called phagocyte cells that kill foreign objects that come in, and, and that spider webbing does a good job of trapping things. So just wanted to mention that it is a different type. I'm not going to put it on your histology uh, lab. I will put a slide of dense fibers on there. Actually, it's a tendon. You'll be looking at it under the microscope. Really dense, uh, fibrous, kind of a gory picture for the day down here. That's in your ankle. Um, you know, what is the difference between a tendon and a ligament? Both of them have collagenous fibers in them. The biggest difference is ligaments have a little more elastic fiber. Tendons do not kind of an uh, interesting word there, non-stretchability, but tendons don't have much give to them. Uh, your Achilles tendon, think of it. You don't want to ever rupture that terrible injury. It takes forever to get over. Uh, but really high tensile strength, much like steel. Uh, really good for anchoring muscles to bones. So a tendon an anchors a muscle to bone. Ligaments are bone to bone is what they're connecting. And the biggest difference is the uh, ligaments have more elastic fiber to them than does um, tendons, okay? And, and we'll look more of that later when we get into the muscle chapter. Just kind of want to mention them here, uh, but that's about all I'll mention. The last ones I'll just group together really fast here. 
bone and cartilage. I'm just going to put support and protection. We'll look at bone over in the lab. I have a slide of that. I have a slide of blood, which is your fluid type of connective tissue. Hemopoetic, fancy name for bone marrow, blood cell producing tissue. I'm not going to mention a lot about them because we will get them in later chapters as well. In fact, chapter coming up next. So you can see there's a lot of difference. Think of the difference between bone and blood, fluid and solid. Uh, a lot of difference between ligaments and tendons and areolar tissue and adipose tissue. So that's kind of why I want, uh, I have a lot of slides of connective tissue over there uh, when you do your histology lab. We'll look at bone, we'll look at blood, we'll look at areolar, adipose, dense fibrous. Uh, I'll look, we'll look at some muscle tissue. Uh, so I have a lot of different ones I want you to look at in, in uh, lab. And, and then hopefully after you take the quiz and, and do that lab, it'll give you a little bit more of an idea of what they look like visually uh, so we can do good on the tests when it comes up. All right. Okay, that's it for connective tissue, kind of a whirlwind tour through it. But, hey, I hope that makes sense. If you've got any questions, you know what to do. Ask me questions, and we will see you later. See you. Bye.